Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So in this one then, I want to talk to you about dropshipping and the fact that it's getting more and more difficult for a couple of reasons really, but mainly because the actual competition, the amount of people actually searching for dropshipping and actually doing dropshipping is increasing. And the same can be said for Facebook ads as well. Uh, just a quick search online, you can see more and more people are searching for Facebook ads and there are more and more people coming onto the platform and actually advertising on Facebook as well. Since about 2013, 14, I'll put some screenshots up. You can see that the amount of people actually advertising on Facebook is increasing by about a million people year on year. So more and more people are dropshipping then more and more people are advertising on Facebook. How on earth are we going to be successful? What are the kind of things that we can do to make sure that we stand out from the crowd and people buy from us and not somebody else? So they're going to be the kind of things I'm discussing in this video. But before we jump into number one, then I just want to quickly mention, as always, I am going to wait a free one to one consultation call with me in this video. If you want to enter the draw for a chance to win it, all you have to do is simply like the video and leave a comment down below and if you commented on my previous video then just make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced and with that being said then guys let's get straight into it so number one then guys um, I've got some notes on my phone by the way so forgive me if I keep looking down but number one then is the products you sell so the reason this is so important is because the very first time somebody sees you and your brand and your product, the first thing they're gonna notice is what you're trying to sell then, the actual product. And if you're selling the same products as everybody else and they've perhaps seen that same product in an ad but from a different company um, once, twice, even three times, that day before they see yours, you're just gonna blend in with everybody else and you're not gonna capture their attention. At the end of the day, you're advertising on Facebook, on social media platform, people's attention are gonna be all over the place, especially in today's world. And um, there's so many different things that could happen on somebody's phone or in their life that could distract them. Unless you do something that like just warrant some sort of reaction or connection with the person who sees your ad. They're just going to keep swiping past it and they're not even going to notice it. So number one is the products you sell. Try and find products that aren't your everyday products or stereotypical dropshipping products because they're the ones that when people see them, if they haven't seen them before, it's going to, they're going to get more attention than if they have seen them before. And this can apply to many, many things as well. So just to give you an example, if you think about a viral video that went around the internet, the reason it's gone viral is because initially nobody had seen it. So when they first see it, they have that connection, that reaction to it, and they want to share their friends. But once they've seen it once, twice, even three times, then they kind of become numb to it and kind of dull to it because they've already seen it, they already know what to expect. and people will have the same reaction to your product if they've already seen it half a dozen times before. So the actual product you're selling is very, very important and the way you advertise it is probably more so important. You need a product that not many people have seen before and you also need to advertise it in a way that captures people's attention, forces them to have that connection and reaction with it so that they want to share it on social media. We're advertising on a social media platform and you need to take advantage of that. You People can share your ad to the average Facebook user, I say this all the time, but it's so true. The average Facebook user has two to 300 friends. So if they share it, that's potentially another two to 300 people that will see your ad. So that is the importance. Take advantage of that. Create an ad that has that connection with your customer, has that emotional reaction that forces them to want to share it with their friends. And the chances are as well, if you're advertising in a niche to a particular person, that their friends are also within that niche and also may be interested in your product. So number one then is have a really good product, try and find one that not many people have seen before, or at least try and do it in a slightly different way. So it could be a slightly different design or some sort of bundle offer or slightly different color. And then when it comes to advertising as well, be professional about it, um, invest in the actual product itself, get it delivered to your door, um, film a really good ad, or better yet, pay a professional to do it. Moving on to number two then guys, we have customer service and interaction. So every time you interact with a customer or provide some sort of service, then it's a chance to build a relationship and trust with your customer. And trust me, the relationships you have with your customers are more important than you can ever imagine. Just to give you an example then of how powerful this is, um, I'll follow Gary Vaynerchuk on YouTube and I watched this interview he did with a restaurant owner. And this restaurant owner conducted his own experiments and he found out that if you can provide good service to somebody on average of three times, then in effect, you'll have a customer for life. And I want you guys to apply that to your e-commerce businesses as well, is that try and put your brand and your vision, um, your product in front of somebody at least three times 
and try and actually interact with them like a human being. It doesn't even have to be relatable to the product. Simply ask somebody how their day was. One thing or like strategy I like to implement then is that when I'm running ads, I always make sure that the last comment is from the page, so the page I'm actually running it from, and just simply ask a question like, um, what's everybody up to this weekend? Or um, comment below, we want to know um, what breed of dog do you have? And a really good one that works really, really well is post a picture of your dog below in the comment section um, for a chance to win this product for free. And that's getting people engaging with your ad, posting pictures of their dog. Everybody loves to post pictures of their dogs because they're cute and people like to look at dogs. And that's really good customer service, a really good customer interaction. And everybody who posts their picture, I will always comment back and say, what a gorgeous dog. Um, like, thank you so much for posting. Your entry has been entered into our competition. And people see that. They see it's a proper brand talking to people like human beings. You sign off every comment with your name. Um, it's a good interaction. And every time somebody sees that, then you're just going to come across as a more authentic, trustworthy and established brand. Moving on to point number three, then we have provide value to your customers. So when somebody comes, when somebody sees your ad, then um, it's natural for them to go into your Facebook page and to kind of do dig a little bit deeper and see if you're trustworthy, see what you're all about um, and see whether that they will actually trust you to spend their money or not. And if they just go scroll down your newsfeed and look at the kind of things you're posting and it's just buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, then you're not providing any value to your customer. Um, and in effect, they're not gonna trust you so much and they probably won't buy from you. So a good example of this then is essentially what I'm doing right now. So I record these videos for you guys um, and hopefully provide value to you. Um, it's all for free as well. I've got the free eBooks in the video descriptions down below, which anybody can download 100% free. And the more value you provide then, the more time somebody's gonna see you and your brand. So it makes them buy into your brand more, um, it makes them want to follow you because you're giving them value for free. So if you're in a dog niche, for example, you could post, say, the top 10 dog walks in certain areas. Um, and the more you provide value for people, the more they're going to respect you and the better relationship you're going to have with them. And that's going to increase your overall chances of them coming back and actually making a purchase. And even better yet, telling somebody else about you as well. Um, word of mouth can be a powerful thing with certain niches that people who like to cycle every single day or three times a week, the chances are they've got maybe half a dozen friends that do the same thing. So don't underestimate word of mouth, even though social media is probably like the most powerful um, like pretty much thing in the world if you like um, just don't underestimate the power of word of mouth so number three then is providing value to your customers so one th one way I like to do this then is create a blog um, and just once a week it doesn't take long maybe half an hour maybe an hour max um, just come up with something that your customers will find useful and just post a link to it on your Facebook page. Now, if you're going into a new niche, you've got a new Facebook page, I recommend writing at least six different blog posts and posting them on your page. So when people come across, they don't just see that so-and-so changed their profile picture or so-and-so updated their opening hours or whatever it is. And make sure it's actually something on there of value that people will want to engage with. Another thing that's really simple and easy to do is simply post memes. So on a majority of my Facebook pages, I'll post just like, um, well, the dog niche that I'm in, it'll just be like a dog with a crock on his head and it just says Happy Monday. And when people see that, they laugh at it because it's a dog being stupid. It says Happy Monday. It's relevant to the day. Um, and people want their friends to see that. So loads of people will tag it. Loads of people will like it. And the more interactions and engagement you can get in th you can get through your Facebook page, it's just going to pay off. Number four then is a very, very big one. I did a video purely on this topic recently and it is branding. Um, the amount of stores I look at nowadays um, a lot of people will message me, um, ask me to look at their stores and lo they look a bit just kind of like mishmash if that makes sense. They're not branded, they don't have a theme, they don't have a mission statement, they don't have a vision, nothing that they can share with their customers that's going to resonate with them. It's just simply buy this product, um, it's really cheap and it's really good. Whereas nowadays that just isn't going to cut it because there's just too many people doing that same thing. If you want to succeed in this business, you have to do the same as everybody else, but you have to do it even better. And one way, to, and a good example of this then is if you take Nike or Nike, if you're American, if you just watch their ads when they're on TV, when they're on Facebook, um, no matter what product they're selling, not once do they talk about the product. They don't ever turn around and say, buy these trainers because the sole is made out of some sort of special rubber and 
the materials let your feet breathe they just don't talk about the product at all they talk about kind of like the mission statement and the following and the movement that they're creating and the things people have achieved um, using their products because ultimately that's what people are buying into the same as Gymshark Gymshark don't talk about how good their clothing is they talk about the things that people have achieved the kind of athletes that use their clothes because it's a movement more than anything that people want to buy into and want to be part of because it's the sort of thing that make people feel good about themselves um, it motivates them to do something good in their life. And if you can build a brand then and a following around your product and your movement, it doesn't matter who comes into the market, even if they undercut you by like 50%, people will still buy your product over somebody else's. Like a pair of Nike trainers now, like the latest ones is upwards of a hundred pound. You can go into any sports direct shop and buy a pair of Reeboks or um, I don't know, um, I'm not really into trainers, but and spend like 15, 20, maybe 30, 40 quid. But people don't, people want Nike ones because it's the kind of brand and vision that they want to be part of. So number four then is building a brand. And this is kind of the reason why, whenever I talk to people on the one-to-one -one calls, I always say, why are you getting into dropshipping? Do you just wanna make some quick money then get out? Or do you wanna build something long-term and substantial? Because if you do, then go into a space that you are passionate about. So when it comes to things like writing a blog, providing value to your customers, having an interest in what your customers are doing. If you think about companies like Blendjet, Nike, pretty much, like any brand within that space, if you go into their websites, they'll give things away for free. So it comes back to the previous point, which is value. Like they'll provide certain recipes if you go on their Instagram pages um, or certain exercise plans that they give away for free because value will always trump anything else. Just believe me of that. So number four then is branding. Have a clear mission statement and vision. Um, be like Nike. Number five then, the final point I want to mention in this video, because um, I've probably been talking for like 20 minutes now, is be professional. Now, it might seem like a bit of a rubbish point, but it applies to more people than you realize. The amount of stores I look at and Facebook pages that don't give across the right opinion or the correct impression that would encourage somebody to spend 20, 30, 40 dollars with you. Nowadays, people are becoming more and more savvy um, against scammers and uh, things like that on the internet and the slightest thing that doesn't look right on your store or your Facebook page will put someone off because the chances are they'll be able to source your product elsewhere and if you give them the tiniest reason to go elsewhere they will it can be something just stupid like the layout of your store or if the font just doesn't look very good um, then it can lead them not to trust you you must 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 have a really professional slick and good looking store and the easiest way to do this then is pay for a theme you can get a pretty decent theme for like a hundred dollars now I'm not saying it's necessary I'm just saying that it's going to put you at a better advantage than the majority of other Shopify stores out there so number five then don't underestimate this be professional have a social media page on every platform make sure that the profile picture is the same you could have like a motto or saying um, like Nike is obviously just do it so when people go on platform whatever it is they see your um, they see your motto or your saying so that resonates with them in their mind so every time they see your logo and your brand and that's the thing that comes to mind and it's all just about building an impression about your customer and if you don't have a professional looking store and professional looking social media pages um, then you're just not going to cut it and people aren't going to trust you ultimately that's what it comes down to then why should somebody buy from you the number one thing is they must trust you so obviously make sure you offer paypal make sure your store looks good uh, make sure your facebook ads are relative to the kind of products you're selling if you're selling like really high quality jewelry and you've got like a really slick and expensive and luxurious looking store then don't put a ton of spammy emojis in your ad copy because the two and two just don't go together it's all about building a brand and that everything works in unison to create like the same kind of look if that makes sense anyway with that being said guys um I apologize for talking for so long. Hopefully you're still watching. If you are, thank you very much. I really do appreciate everybody who watches the videos for this long. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please do make sure you hit that like button. And if you want to be entered into the draw then um, to win the one-to-one -one call for a chance to win it anyway, then just make sure you leave a comment down below. And with that being said then guys, let's get into announcing the winner of the previous video. So here we are then guys on the previous video. Um, three costly Facebook ad mistakes. Um, some pretty good information in this video. So if you haven't watched it yet, make sure you do go and check it out. So anyway, I'm just gonna take the URL then in the top left, head over to the random comment picker. So just to say again, all of these competitions are 100% random. Um, I do not pick the winners, unfortunately. 
And anyway, the winner of the previous video then is that person. So thank you very much for commenting on my video. Um, please make sure you reach out on Instagram. We can get that call arranged. Um, and guys, if you want to stop trying your luck in every single video and you just want to get straight down to business and book a call right away, you can do so. Make sure you check out the video links in the video description down below. And with that being said then guys, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one.